Here we're going to talk a bit more about the implied volatility that is baked into option prices. Given that the implied volatility relates to an underlying asset and there's only one underlying asset, you might think the implied volatility is the same for all options on the same asset. Um, that's not true. Empirically, what we observe when we look at option prices for different expirations, different times to expiration, and different strikes, we actually find that the prices that we observe in options markets um, suggest different implied volatilities. Now, for different expirations, that's not really a puzzle. You know, over different time horizons, you can expect different levels of volatility. For example, if there was a big decision or a big macro event happening in three months' time, you wouldn't expect a lot of volatility for the next two months, but maybe there'll be a lot of implied volatility for the three-month options. So different expirations having different volatility, um, that's not a, a quandary, that's not a puzzle. That's really just a, um, a reflection of the fact that you have different volatilities over different time horizons, different expected volatilities over different time horizons. This is the real curious one. Why would you have different implied volatilities baked into options with the same expiring over the same time frame? Why would you have, for different strike options, why would you have different implied volatilities baked into those option prices? Well, I guess the first thing we should do is think, well, why are they, how are they different? You know, what do we tend to see? Well, there's two major um, patterns that we tend to see when we look at implied volatility versus strike price for the same expiry, say over the next three months. Um, we might see a volatility smile. Now, a volatility smile is, well, as the name suggests, we see a kind of a, a U shape, kind of like a smile. Um, when we're looking at implied volatility of options, we tend to find that at the money options, so when the strike is close to where the underlying currently is, they have relatively low implied volatility. But when we look at out the money puts, which have low strikes, and out the money calls, we tend to find that they have higher implied volatilities. So um, the further away from being at the money, if you like, the more out the money you are, the higher the implied volatilities we see with this um, when the volatility smile is in play in markets. Now we don't see it all the time, but the point is this, this is observed relatively frequently. Um, so this might be something that's quite natural. I mean, out the money options, the underlying needs to move, doesn't it, in order for those options to pay off. So the people buying those options are expecting a big move and that's what they're pricing into the options. That might be a rational explanation for this. Um, but if we haven't got necessarily um, a balanced concern about big moves down for puts and big moves up for calls, that's when we might see a volatility skew. Volatility skew here is really just one-sided. In fact, what we find is that out the money puts have high implied volatilities, but our implied volatility in, uh, decreases as we move towards out the money options, but actually it continues to decrease when we look at out the money calls. Now this just might be a reflection of why the market buys options. The market buys options largely for protection. I know there's a lot of speculation that goes on and so on, but a large driver of, of, of the reasons why um, financial market participants buy options is for protection. And financial market participants need a lot more protection against the downside than they do against the upside. Because pervasively, markets are long assets. They tend to be long assets rather than short assets. So they need protection against asset prices falling, and that involves buying puts. So when we're looking at financial market participants buying insurance against prices moving against them, you might find they're more, uh, well, they need insurance through puts against the downside. They don't actually need, or they're not interested in insurance against movements up. So that's why implied volatilities in out the money calls are not so high. It might also simply be a reflection of sentiment as well. Um, if markets are particularly bearish, then we're worried about big moves down. And so you'll find that implied volatility in puts will pick up. People will pay more for puts than they will for out the money calls. But of course, if people are bullish as well, if you have equal sentiment, bullish and bearish, 
that's what might lead to a smile when both out the money options have higher implied volatility as the bullish and bearish participants come in and express their view. Okay, so what sort of trades can we use to uh, take advantage of the volatility skew or the volatility smile? Well, don't forget the, actually the most common one is the volatility skew. Okay, that's the most common um, feature that is observed when we're thinking about differences in implied volatility. It's the volatility skew. So that's where out the money puts have high implied volatility. So what do we do with high implied volatility? We sell it. So maybe we'll sell out the money puts, all right, which have high implied volatility. And to um, play this relative value, we're going to buy an option with lower implied volatility. So uh, I'll make that, I'll complete that word so we know what it is. We're going to buy a call that has got lower implied volatility. So that would be taking advantage of the volatility skew, selling high volatility, buying lower volatility. Of course, you, this is called a risk reversal. Okay, it gets its name um, from currency markets because this trade is often used to reverse currency risk. However, um, you might look at this and you might say, hang on a minute, I've seen this before. Long a call, that's a risk reversal, is long a call and short a put. All right. You might say, we've seen this many times, dozens of times. This is a synthetic long position, like a forward position or a geared position in the underlying. <clears throat> so this does bring with it directionality. This does bring with it a long position in the underlying. You know, there's going to be a long delta here, say 0.3, and that brings with it long exposure. For example, if your options, if your position is on a um, 1,000 shares, then a dollar move is going to give you exposure of um, 0.3 times 1,000, which is $300. So you are exposed to a positive delta here. Uh, when actually your goal is to profit when the implied volatilities of the put, which is too high, um, uh, correct and become closer to the implied volatilities of the call, which is, in your view, relatively too low. So um, the key thing here is that this net long position, we can, um, and you would expect this to be delta hedged. So maybe you would sell short um, 300 shares there to remove your delta of 0.3 times 1,000 um, in order to delta hedge that position. That would be a risk reversal. So yes, you know, we offset by selling 300 shares. We've said that. Um, that's dynamic delta hedging, all right? Um, and it's dynamic because don't forget, delta does change as the underlying changes. Don't forget about our discussion about gamma later on, okay? So you are going to have to dynamically hedge this um, position. Um, you are going to find that your delta changes over time and you're going to have to adjust the size of your hedge to reflect that. That's called dynamic hedging. Okay, two additional terms to uh, just to cover in this module before we move away from this discussion about implied volatility. The first we've kind of touched upon, the term structure of volatility. Uh, I started this module by saying having different implied volatilities for different expirations, different maturities is not an outrage because we'd expect you know, different events over different time frames leading to different volatility levels. Um, we do borrow from the, uh, the derivatives market, the futures market, the name Contango, if we have higher implied volatility for a longer dated, for longer dated options. We do borrow that term, just in the way that we borrow the term, um, well, we use the term contango when futures prices are going up as we look out um, further along the term structure. Term structure, of course, just means we're looking at different maturities. Um, the other thing that you might see mentioned here is an implied volatility surface. So this is a 3D graph. It's got three axes. You're going to put the implied volatility of your options on the z-axis which points up, and on the x-axis, which is here, you're going to put um, maturity, 
<coughs> which will reflect the term structure of volatility, so different, um, different implied volatilities for different expirations, which is rational, and strike here as well on the y-axis. So that's, you know, uh, kind of the third dimension here, sort of pointing into the page. So what you're going to look at here is you're going to look at a surface. Um, if we've got a, um, a smile going on, of course, as we move across the y-axis, we might see that sort of thing going on. If we're in contango, where implied volatility is higher, the further we move out, this line becomes a, a surface. So this line, see that smile there as we're at the money and then out the money options have higher implied volatility. If we've got contango, we might find this surface moves up as we move out. All right, so trying to draw quite a difficult 3D graphic here, but this surface, if I drew the lines, there's this kind of divot for the smile as we move out over time. This is moving out over time as we move to the right. And, um, but we, move, we dip down and we're actually shifting up as we move out. So this is higher. I don't know if I've drawn that perfectly well. This is higher, this end of the surface, than over here towards the, um, uh, towards the uh, zero of the x-axis because we're in contango. So that's supposed to be like a blanket that's kind of sloping up as we move to the right but has got a dip in it as we move into the page along the y-axis, um, reflecting the volatility smile.